basic uh, review, we are going to look at what is motion and how do we measure motion and how do we determine motion. So the definition of motion is a change in position uh, to the object as a reference point. So if I'm standing in the hallway and I'm still, my reference point is my place in the hallway. And then everybody that's moving around me, their change in position is showing me that they're in motion. So when measuring motion, you have to find a point, uh, almost like a place of stillness as your reference. So in the picture of the kid walking, um, this is multiple pictures over time. So my reference point could be like this rock that's here. If you've ever watched the roller coasters, um, the roller coaster frame could be your reference point because it is the thing that is still. So I'm going to put these two clips uh, in the description down below so you can watch them and answer the question. Uh, momentum is a little bit different than motion. Um, momentum is the moving object because of its mass and its velocity. Uh, the more mass an object has, the more momentum it has. Um, if you can think about Mr. Schindler, who's really tall and really you know, muscular, he is going to have a lot more momentum if he were to run at you than, say, a little sixth grader. So when we use momentum as measurement, you need to make sure that you include these units here of kilograms times, that's supposed to be like little x times, meters per second. Um, velocity is similar to uh, momentum, but it has this directional piece to it. So your velocity would be uh, 13 kilometers per meter or times meters per second going south. So um, there's another video. I'll put this one in the link of description as well. So you're going to see how momentum can be transferred. If you've ever seen these Newton's cradles, there's probably one on my desk. Um, if you pull back this first sphere, it's gained in its potential energy. As it moves through, its kinetic energy, its momentum is transferred to the next ball. Because these are all tend to be uh, solid, the momentum is transferred straight through to the uh, sphere or ball on the other end. Inertia, yes, this is a real game. Um, inertia is the the way that an object resists change in motion. So if you are in a car, let me see if it's the next slide. I get so distracted sometimes. Um, if you are driving in the bus, perfect example, in the bus, your inertia is to go forward. Well, when the bus turns, you actually feel like you're turning into the turn, but you see everything kind of move the opposite direction. Uh, so again, the greater the mass, the greater its inertia or its ability to resist or move in motion. Um, the greater the speed, the greater the inertia. So using the Mr. Schindler and the sixth grader example, if Mr. Schindler runs at me, uh, he's going to hurt me a lot more because his mass is greater and his speed tends to be greater than that little sixth grader that runs at me. So inertia is dependent on mass and momentum. So these two little cars here, a little tank and a little car, if they run at this or I push them at this brick wall, this tank, let's say the toy tank run weighs five kilograms and this little toy car weighs one kilogram, this tank is going to have a more a probable ability to knock some of those bricks down because of its mass. So the two cases that we use in this session of the notes is an elephant is moving um, and it has a large amount of momentum. It has a large amount of directional movement. Uh, even though its velocity, its speed and direction is kind of small because it's so big. Uh, a bullet has a large amount of momentum. It has a, a great amount of directional movement and a small mass, which means it has a large velocity. So with velocity, it's kind of uh, counter 
intuitive meaning it's kind of backwards of what you would think. If something has a large velocity, it tends to have a very small amount of mass. If something is a large mass, it tends to have a smaller velocity. So two objects, I've got a mouse and a bowl. Uh, it, which one of those do you think would cause Mr. Bugs Bunny here the more harm and impact? So I hope that you would pick that the bull would have more damage to the Bugs Bunny versus the mouse because the bull is going to take more inertia to slow it down work because its momentum is so much more greater. So which of these two, the football player or the ballerina, would have more inertia? Which one is harder to stop? And why? So, hmm, which one is going to be bigger to stop? Well, hopefully you pick our friend here, the football player, because he has more mass. Velocity. Velocity is the rate and direction of change in the position of an object. Translation, it's the time and direction that something changes. So we've got two little cyclists here. The headwind or the wind going on to him is 5 meters per second. And this cyclist's velocity is 15 meters per second only because he's being slowed down by the wind. Notice that when he goes with the wind, his... Uh, Velocity may be the same, but his relative or his starting velocity has changed a little bit. He's gained in velocity. Newton's laws, hopefully these are review again. Um, an object at rest is going to stay at rest. An object in motion is going to stay in motion in the same direction at the same speed unless it's acted upon by an unbalanced force. So my little guy going 60 miles per hour, he's traveling along. Well, he hits this wall. Yes, it's a wall, not a trash can. Because he doesn't have his seatbelt on, he keeps going at 60 miles per hour because this is the unbalanced force, and his body was moving, and it continues to move until he crashes into the concrete. So this is often called the law of inertia. <clears throat> so hopefully you write that down, that... Law one, object at rest stays at rest. Object in motion stays in motion, often referred to as the law of inertia. Um, some examples of Newton's laws. Uh, when you strain against your seatbelt, this is one that the star test likes to reference. So if you slam on your brakes real hard, you move forward because that's the way your body was trying to go. Um, if you've ever gotten a shoelace caught in a bike chain and you flip over, um, this little guy here has not been flipped by a bike chain problem. He hit a hole in the, uh, like a pothole in the concrete. And so he was going along forward. Well, his wheel stopped, so he keeps going. And then it's not so fun for him. The magician pulling the tablecloth out from under a table dishes. Uh, you've probably seen that one on YouTube. Um, if you've ever had to push your car when it's dead, the strain that you feel while you're pushing it because the car wants to stay still and you are the unbalanced force trying to move it. And then here's our bus rider uh, scenario. The bus turns to the right, but you lean to the left. So when you go home today, if you ride the bus, check that out. Uh, some other Newton law is Newton's third law. This one is the for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So this is that there, if the little skateboarder dog pushes off with his foot to the back of the skateboard, he's going to move forward with his skateboard. Um, two girls here on skates, if they push off from this little green line, if their hands are uh, palm to palm, and they push off, they will go backwards at the same speed in the same in opposite directions. So with this third law, we need to remember that they are always, always, always paired. It's opposite. So if one goes up, the other goes down. One goes to the left, one, the other one goes to the right. So with our rocket ship, the thrusters, the rocket fuel, push down on the ground 
with its uh, force from the fire? Well, because it's pushing down on the uh, ground, the rocket actually moves upwards. That's a, an interesting little Newton's third. Um, they put that on the star release test from two years ago, so I would definitely understand that one. Some examples, um, if you pull a pail up, you're uh, pulling against the force of gravity. Runners, when they push off the start mark, uh, if you watch them, they push back with their legs to go forward. And then baseball, uh, as you swing towards the ball with the bat, when you make contact with the ball, the ball goes the opposite direction. Uh, here's two more. Uh, the air, when you blow up a balloon and you let it go, it's not the air that's escaping that makes the balloon move. It's the air in the atmosphere pushing down on the balloon trying to find a state of equilibrium or balance, equalness. So it's uh, the air pushing on the outside of the balloon making the air come out, which gives it an up and down motion. And then if you've ever seen that people cut the blocks when they chop down with their karate chop, karate chop, they break the board and it goes into two pieces. Uh, for net force, um, this is something that you will have some homework on, so hopefully you pay attention a little bit in it. The force, the net force, is basically the change in velocity that an object has. Uh, if you add up the changes, this gives you the net force. So in the picture down below, I have a, a car being pushed forward at 5 newtons, and the drag or pull is in the opposite direction at 3 newtons. So if you look at the math, 5 that's going forward minus 3, the drag or pull, gives me a net force of 2 newtons. You always have to use a capital N. I know in uh, like with meters, you could use the lowercase m um, for science notification, like that you just have to write it with a, a capital because it is after somebody's name. It's after um, Isaac Newton. So let's look at a couple of these. What is the net force if the wheels of the car apply 10 Newtons, but a parachute applies 7 Newtons in the opposite direction? So here's my little car. I've got 10 Newtons being applied by the tires forward. And because it's the parachute, in the other direction, that means I'm going to subtract. Here's the math already done for us. So 10 minus 7, doing super math, is 3. So let's look at some other. The vocab for this week, there is quite a bit to pick from. Um, you'll need to get your vocabulary and supplies off of the back uh, counter or table area. Your list has got to include uh, four of the following. Um, you cannot do Newton's Law 1 and 3. You must do one or the other. Same thing with balanced and unbalanced. You cannot do both. You have to pick which one you're going to do. So I think that's about it. Let me see what this last slide is. It's a nothing slide. Um, so I'll let this sit for a second. Uh, your vocabulary is due Friday. And... Yeah, there you go. Have a great afternoon.